Been over here sniffing the boxes. As soon as I turn the camera on, you lose interest, huh? Got other things to do. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. You guys, there's more plants. Always more plants happening over here. This time from Walmart. Just a couple of weeks ago, ordered in some plants from the Home Depot. They're from the Southern Living Plant Collection. It's just Nellie Stevens Hollies. You may remember that video. And since then, I realized, you know what? I should get some more hollies. There are some that I like better. I've wanted some Oakland hollies. I've wanted some different viburnums for a while, but just hadn't seen them for sale or they weren't on sale for the prices I wanted to pay. So I figured I'll keep on looking. I'll find the ones I want on sale eventually. And I did. It's a good time of year for it. Not the best time for shipping plants. We can talk about all that. I'm sure you're more interested about what's inside the boxes. So I have two different types of plants here. Like I said, viburnum, holly. There's supposed to be two hollies. The other one isn't here yet. I don't, I don't know where it is. It's supposed to be here by now. So I'd, whatever. Go ahead and get these popped open so you can have like part in the lighting by the way at this time of year. I'm filming outdoors not ideal. The angle of the sun just sucks this time of year. Everything's backlit and shadows are really harsh. Go ahead and get this popped open. This does feel heavier than the Nellie Stevens Hollies did. I don't know. Does that matter though? It's another seven gallon Holly. It should be relatively the same just a different type of plant shipping wise. They look pretty good. Box is torn up. Hopefully the plant's okay. Okay, plant is fine. Definitely smaller than the Nellie Stevens. I'll pull it out. You probably can't see anything with the shadows that are going on from the sun being in the wrong direction. I will say packaging looks the same as when I ordered them from Home Depot. Is what I would expect. These are probably all being shipped from the exact same place regardless of where you're ordering from. At least the ones from Southern Living Plant Collections. Oh, that's got a really wonky growth on it. <laughs> you order plants from these big box stores, chances are they're all shipping out from the same places. So I'd expect shipping to be the same. Look at that. <laughs> What's happening up there? I wish the other one was here so we could compare them with each other, but oh well. This is an Oakland holly. A lot of container going on here and just a little bit of plant. That's okay though. These are quick growers, a seven gallon container, and they are fast growers. So I'm not concerned about that. The Oakland Hollies, these are, like I said, a fast grower, good zone 6A up to 9B, part to full sun. Once they're established, they'll easily put on over a foot of growth a year. So it's a great plant for screening. They have a much softer leaf than the Nellie Stevens, a variation of the oak leaf. Holly from Southern Livings. That's why it's called the Oakland instead of Oak Leaf Holly. You can see the leaf on there. It's kind of oak shaped, sort of. The main thing you notice is that they have softer points on them. They're still kind of spiky, but nothing like the Nellie Stevens Hollies that are much more sharp and they'll get you. You stick your hands in there. This is going to be better for high traffic areas. Remember, I got those Nellie Stevens Hollies kind of as a last resort for a spot where I need a couple of well, medium sized evergreens. I was gonna say large, but really medium sized evergreens to go on each side of a staircase. And I prefer the Oakland because it's softer. People are gonna be walking around over there. But like I said, they'll still get you, but it's not quite as strong as the Nellie Stevens will. 15 to 20 feet high, 12 to 15 feet wide. They respond, respond, they respond well to pruning. Something to do in late winter. The more you prune them though, the less you're going to get flowering out of them and then the less berries that you'll have in the winter time in the fall into winter when you want those nice red berries so that's all up to what you want to do as the grower the oakland holly is supposed to be more full and it should maintain that shape more on its own i will be keeping this pruned though because i want it to 15 to 20 feet it's gonna be too big for where i want it and these are good plants for that type of thing if you want to keep them pruned to a particular shape and particular size They'll respond very well to that. Oh, and there's a variegated version available too. And that's what I really want. Can't find them for sale though in a size that uh, I'm into, right? I want them in a bigger size for the area where I'm gonna be planting them. And that's the Golden Oakland Holly. I think it's just called the Golden Oakland Holly. The Golden has a lighter outline on the leaf and green on the inside. Varies from a cream to a yellow from a lighter green in the spring and things darken up as the season progresses. So if I can get my hands on a couple of those, that would be awesome, but for now, this will have to do. Hopefully the other one shows up because I wanted two of them to, they needed to go with each other. And the other thing about the Oakland Holly is that since it is a derivative, <laughs> derivative cultivar of the Oak Leaf Holly, should in theory maybe be a good pollinator for the Nellie Stevens. So if you have them both, maybe you'll have some better berry production on the Nellie Stevens. 
I don't know. Oak leaf is a good pollinator for the Nellie Stevens, and this is the Oakland. I would think it'd be the same. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, it looks good. It's, <laughs> it's very tall, if you want to count that as part of the plant growth, I suppose it counts. That's a nice size plant. But it was a good deal. They were on sale and you can get the Southern Living. I'm not being paid for this, by the way. Southern Living, they don't know me. I don't think they do. But Home Depot, Walmart, and Amazon, many other places sell Southern Living plants online. And uh, I went with Walmart because they had the best price along with the Rakuten extension, which also not sponsored. If you have that on your browser, it's nifty. I use it a lot. They send a check every few months and you just, you just get money back when you shop. Like I said, not sponsored, but that's why I went with Walmart to get these that had nothing to do with the company. It was just where I was going to get the best bang for my buck. So in total, I believe that these came out to being like 60 a piece. That's with the sale that they were having and the little Rakuten extension, the discount that I got or the money back thing that they do. You want to talk about the other ones? The other ones are pretty exciting and um, probably shouldn't have gotten them, but we're going to find out together how those are going to do here. These are both the same plant. The address isn't over there, is it? All right. So these are both the same plants, just different size containers. I couldn't make up my mind. I was having one of those days where I was like, well, do I want the two gallon or the three gallon. The three gallon is only a few dollars more. I will open them up. We can talk about it some more. It wasn't a tremendous price difference between the two. I think it was maybe $10. Could have been up to $15 at the most, but I remember it just, it wasn't much, but I wanted two, and I guess so like I just didn't want to spend the extra to have two of the same. I don't know. Regardless, this is going to give a, an impression if you want to know size differences. We have two gallon plant here, three gallon plant here, and seven gallon over there. Wait, it also, it says right here. Open from bottom. Why am I do it's is it too late? Okay. Let's open this from the bottom. Okay, don't don't do that. Don't pull in the plastic, it's not gonna help you. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. again. Packaged well. I know that's an extreme close up. I'll pop the other one open and look at them side by side. Okay, hey, those look nice. What they are? Can you? Probably not. Is this a huge difference, by the way, in size two gallon versus three gallon? I'm gonna say no. Although a lot of what we pay for with plants is going to be the root system, so. Perhaps these are both fast growing plants. So these are copper top viburnums. Here's the tag. I'll just be putting it up on the screen anyway, so I don't know why I felt the need to show it to you like this, but there you have it. Beautiful evergreen viburnum. They grow very, very quickly. They have nice glossy evergreen foliage. The main attraction to them is in the name, copper top, right? This is one that puts out a beautiful reddish bronzy foliage with its new growth. So the more you prune them, the more bronzy, beautiful red foliage you get on them, which is nice. It does fade out and age to a nice green color. Eight to 10 feet high by five to six feet wide. I feel like I've seen them bigger than that before, but I don't know, it could be mistaking the plants because I don't live in their growing zone. I, technically, maybe, but maybe I do. I don't, things have gotten so confusing <laughs> with the change in the USDA map. So these are largely listed online as a zone eight and up. Southern Living has them listed as a seven B and up and then i've seen a lot of places calling them a zone seven and up just like straight up zone seven so these are an experimental plant that i'm going to be keeping in containers like i do with my akubas plants that are marginally hardy here that sometimes need to be moved in when it drops below like five degrees fahrenheit start to move down towards the below zero temperatures and i just pop them inside it never lasts for more than a couple of days maximum i don't mind doing that with some of my shrubbery and this is a really pretty one that can stay out for the majority of the year, but there are going to be some days where I have to move them in. I did get two of them. That's for a reason, because I'm going to stick one in the ground and I will probably get more of these in the springtime. For now, they're going to stay potted and just get moved in when it gets really cold. I don't want to plant them right now. Anything that's marginally hardy is not something to plant in the fall time. Tomorrow's the first day of winter, so you know what I mean. You want to get them in the ground in the early spring, mid spring, when they have time to put out their roots and establish themselves and be a more full hardy plant for their first winter in a zone that they're not really recommended for. 
I'm 7A, it says 7B, some places say zone 8, I don't know, comment down below. Are you familiar with uh, these, have you grown them? And if you've grown them, have you seen winter damage? What was the winter damage like? What were the temperatures and things that seemed to affect them? I have a pretty good microclimate back here, so I think they'll be okay, but if not, oh well, it was an experiment. That's probably gonna be a theme for 2024. I'm gonna be planting a lot of stuff for zone seven that I've never tried here before and probably more zone eight things because as a zone sixer, I've been growing a lot of zone seven things. So now I'm zone seven, let's roll the dice and play with some more plants and see how hardy they really are. That's what these are for. It, one of them is gonna stay in a container because I just think they're a beautiful plant. I don't want it to die, but the other one, yeah, we'll just have at it. See what goes on when we have some pretty extreme temperatures, but that's gonna be for next year for now. Just really nice, pretty, glossy foliage. I probably didn't emphasize as much as I should. Look at that foliage. Nice, long, narrow leaves, very, very glossy. And I probably didn't mention it's a sweet viburnum, so flowers in the springtime, they should have a sweet fragrance to them since they're one of the sweet viburnums. Viburnum odoratissimum, I believe is the name for the sweet viburnum types. I could be wrong about that. There's so many viburnums that all gets jumbled up in my head. But this is what I'm gonna be growing more for the foliage than for the flowers. But it's nice that they will have, oh no, that hasn't been there the whole time, has it? I hope not, I'm so sorry. As saying not plants, I'm growing for the flowers anyways. I'm growing these for that beautiful, large, green, glossy foliage and the magnificent red new growth that they put out in the springtime or when they get pruned. They should sporadically put out some new growth throughout the growing season that will have some tone to it. But the biggest flush out is always going to be in the mid to late spring up here where I live. That's about when viburnum, evergreen viburnums flush out. A little bit in early summer and from there and on, there's just gonna be some sporadic growth on them, if any at all. So I actually haven't grown the copper top, but I have seen them around or seen something around that looks just like it. That's why I thought it was something that would be worth a try. And regardless, it's just nice to have more shrubbery and pottery that has nice texture to it. And I think that those long, shiny, glossy leaves, that's a good, texture that's something i want out here you know, one thing that was weird about this order compared to the home depot order was that the home depot order everything shipped out at the same time i guess it was just two plants but still they shipped out at the same time and they arrived at the same time with these every single plant has had a different tracking number and shown up on different days so two days ago yesterday and then today so yeah they sat in their boxes it was really cold so i was like they're fine they can chill for a couple days. These aren't plants where I was worried about getting them out of their packages right away. They aren't delicate, dainty little plants. <sighs> uh, did I mention with the copper tops, the more sun, the better as far as having intensity in the foliage, but it is a viburnum and it should be able to go down to part sun without too much of a problem. It's not gonna be quite as full, but they should have a, a more longer extended growth for faster screening just not as fast, or not as full, right? Because less sun, less branches, but longer branches, so that'd be okay. They are recommended for full sun though. Just saying, I've seen them in part sun plenty of times, even part shade, they've been okay. With sweet viburnum specifically, not necessarily the copper top. I'd give them as much sun as possible. I think it's, I gotta go. That's not gonna stop anytime soon. We've seen the plants, I've said everything I need to say. They're nice plants. There you have it, some Southern Living Plants from Walmart. Comment down below, say hi, love talking to everybody, tips, tricks, suggestions for these plants, you've grown them, always appreciate it. Check out the comment section for more of that kind of information. People always have lots of good things to offer. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.